You've just learned to play mahjong, but the question now is how to get better at it after possibly losing many many games. In this video, I'll be showing you how to strategize your gameplay and the one exercise to do to help you improve your mahjong confidence. At the beginning, when you first learned to play Mahjong, you most likely had to deal with a lot of variables, such as rolling the dice and knowing how to calculate your wins. Instead, we'll only be focusing on one beginner-friendly practice exercise in building your winning hands without needing to worry about other factors. If this is your first time watching this Mahjong tutorial and you are looking for the basic rules, I've made a video tutorial that covers that and a quick lesson on how to read the Chinese characters. I'll put the link to that video in the card here for you to check out. Closed captions are available if you need them and I will have timestamps for you for easy reference. Setting up the gameplay with the Let's Mahjong app. For the purpose of practicing this Mahjong skill by ourselves, we'll be using Let's Mahjong app and play with the AI according to our own gameplay settings. It's an awesome app as it comes in both English and Chinese interface and it's absolutely free to download from the Play App stores. I've put the download details in the description box below for you to check out. The first thing you'll want to do with this exercise is to make a custom game. After tapping the start button, go to the free play section in the main menu and it will take you to the settings page to make your custom game. Here you'll be shown which AI characters you'll be up against and the current rule modifications. Pressing the shuffle button will change which AI characters you want to play with. To change the rule settings, tap anywhere in the top right row. In the settings page, the rule modifiers are as follows. The left column determines the way the melds are scored in the game. Go with the classic scoring option as it's the scoring system that most players go by. The bottom left row is the option to play with flower tiles. As flower tiles are considered as bonus tiles, Go with the no flower option on the right as we do not need the flower tiles for this exercise. The top middle row is the number of wins you want to play in one session. One win means one round or a cycle of dealers. As beginners, you want to keep this quite short, so set this to one win. The middle row determines the minimum points that can be scored per game. Now this is the most important setting to change for this exercise and is highly recommended for beginners. Set this to zero so that all melds are allowed in your gameplay to win your games. Next are the optional rules that you can change but these will not affect our exercise much. The top right row determines whether the discarder, meaning the player who gave the winning tile to the winner of that game, pays for all. I recommend going with discard a pays all option as it'll be the Chinese equivalent to paying a marginal school fees. The middle right row is the marble multiplier that determines how much in-game currency is won or lost during the game. And the bottom row is the maximum number of points you can score on each game. With classic rules, we will not be scoring much, so you can ignore this part. Once you have completed your settings, you can hit start to start your session. How to plan your strategy at the beginning of the game. Recognizing melt patterns and how to make them is the basic gameplay for Mahjong. Therefore, we will be learning how to plan our strategy by knowing how to recognize melt patterns and aim to increase the odds. Upon drawing your hand from the wall, from the dice roll, there will be a mix of tiles in your hand. So, once you have drawn your tiles, sort your tiles first. If you're playing the tabletop version of the game with physical tiles, you'll be doing this manually. But as we are using the Let's Mahjong app, the app will sort the tiles out for you, which will take the pressure off from sorting the hand by yourself. The app will sort itself as follows. 
the suit tiles will always be to your left ordered from 1 to 9 and the honor tiles will always be to your right from your left you will have the character suits the bamboo suits the dot suits the wind tiles and the dragon tiles by grouping the tiles in their own suits with the numbers in order you already have a clearer view of what your hand looks like once you've had your hand sorted in order the next thing to do is to recognize one of two things are the single tiles by themselves and are the tiles that I can meld with just one more tile. Single tiles are easiest to find in any hand as they will be by themselves. This is especially easy to find in the honor tiles since you will always need at least a pair of identical honor tiles to make your melds. Next, you will try to find the tiles that are by themselves in the suits. In this case, we only have one tile that is in the dot suits. As this tile does not have other suits that it can potentially meld with, you can treat it as a single tile. In most cases, we try to discard the single tiles first as we are unable to use them to meld anything. Of course, there will always be exceptions, one of which I'll show later in this tutorial, but for now, aim to discard single tiles in your games and consider the different meld combinations that may come up. The honor tiles are not a problem because you only need to match the same tiles together to make your melds. This means that you only need to practice on grouping the suit tiles. Therefore, always sort your suits and honor tiles first if you're playing the tabletop version. The trick for recognizing melds and suits are the following. Look for pairs, look for continuous numbers, and look for gaps. What do I mean by these? Let's take a look at this example. In this hand, we currently only have honor tiles that don't have pairs. So when you take away the honor tiles to the right and are left with only the suits, how many combinations can you make with one extra tile? The answer here is 5, and I'll tell you why. Remember how I said recognizing meld patterns is the basic gameplay for Mahjong? At all times, you will be doing exactly that, finding and increasing the chances of getting free tile melds. What most Mahjong guides don't tell you is how to increase those chances. We'll keep using this hand as an example. What we'll do is divide our tiles into suits as it is, and look at each suit as their own unit. From here, we see which suit has the most or least tiles. At first glance, we can see we only have one for dot tile. The chances of getting a male combo out of that tile is not high because you don't have the other tiles on hand to make any kind of meld. So our plan is to discard this tile when we have the chance. The only time we may potentially keep this tile is if another tile shows up in a draw. So unless this happens, we will plan to discard the 4 dot tile. Next up, let's look at the character suit selection on the far left. Out of these character tiles in our current hand, we can only potentially make one meld. For now, we may be able to make a pong hand out of the pair of two character tiles. But what about the 6 and 9? At the current state, you can treat them like the 4 dots, because you cannot make anything out of those tiles yet. Here are the reasons why. Firstly, with this 9 character tile, you will need either 2 or more 9 character tiles to make a pong hand, or you need a 7 and 8 character tiles to make your chow hand. Similarly, this 6 character tile also has no other tiles to make any meld at this stage. However, this is still the early stage in the game, the possibilities of making melds with these tiles may change, depending on what tiles may show up later. Next we come to the most interesting part of the hand, the bamboo tiles. In its current hand, we can potentially make 4 different kinds of melds. If you take the 3 and 4 bamboo tiles, we can either add a 2 or 5 bamboo to make a continuous chow combo. On the other hand, we have a pair of 4 bamboo. With these two tiles, it is possible to make a pong hand with an extra 4 bamboo. And here, we have a gap. 
with 4 and 6 bamboo, meaning we can fill the gap with the 5 bamboo tile to make a child meld. After inspecting your hand like this at the beginning of the play, you have already formulated a 3 part general plan for this game. Discard the honor tiles first. If there are no other usable dot tiles that show up, discard the 4 dots. Try to get melds for the character and bamboo tiles. As you can see, you have already looked for the pairs, continuous numbers, and gaps to recognize the melds. Next, we'll be doing a sample gameplay with this hand, but before we do that, if you enjoyed this video so far, hit the like button and also let me know in the comments below any questions about Mahjong or video suggestions you'd like me to make. Also, do follow me on social media to stay updated with some news that I post often. And now, on to the next section. Carrying out your strategy during the game. Now that we have recognized the potential chill and pro melts, let us go through the gameplay for the sample hand and see how the melt possibilities and the thinking process change. Here's a quick recap. We have two pairs for pong possibilities, several chow possibilities in the bamboo tiles, and so far we do not have anything we can meld with among the honor tiles and the dot tile. Our strategy for now is to discard the honor tiles first while we watch how the game goes. Let us start. We have drawn an 8 bamboo tile. We have a 6 bamboo, so we can potentially use this to make a 6, 7, 8 chow. As the East Wind Honor Tile is already discarded, I'll follow with an East Wind discard as it is a safe strategy, which I'll explain in a different video later. But for the purpose of this video and to keep this simple, just follow the honor tiles the other players are discarding. We have drawn a red dragon and we have a pair. We'll keep this as a pong melt potential and keep discarding the other honor tiles. We'll discard the north tile for now. Let us continue. Right now we have a chance to make a pong. You can choose to skip the pong or declare the pong. As we are still very early on in the game and we are still building our tiles, we'll call for pong and discard the green dragon. Okay, we've drawn an 8 character tile. We have now increased the child meld by later turning it into a 6, 7, 8 character chow or a 7, 8, 9 chow. We're now out of honor tiles to discard, so we'll discard the 4 dots and continue the game. Occasions where we might draw the same tile we've discarded earlier, as this happens very often. For now, we'll stick to the plan by playing the current hand instead of trying to wait for another green dragon to come. So, we'll discard this green dragon as well. drawn a 7 bamboo and completed a chow meld in hand. Already we can see we only need 2 more tiles to win this game. Right now there are 3 possible tiles we will need to get for winning. The first one we will need for sure is the 7 character tile to complete this meld and the other is either the red dragon tile or the 2 character tile to make a pong. This will depend on how the tiles will show up in the game. For now, let us discard the free bamboo. Again, we will discard the north tile and stick to the plan for a 7 character and one of the other two tiles to make a pong. We've drawn a white dragon tile. We do not need this. Let us continue. Okay. 
Okay, we've got a two character to pull. We will take that and discard the six character tile. Once we've done that, we will only need to wait for the seven character tile to complete the child mail and win the game as we'll need the red dragon pair of tiles to serve as the eyes, meaning the pair that doesn't get melded. From this point on, it's a waiting game of luck and patience. Let us continue with the rest of the game. have the seven character tile to six. Oh, let's do that and we have won the game. As you can see throughout this gameplay, all it takes is some meld pattern recognition to build up your hand from this to this. This is just an example of how one game worked out in this instance. At the end of the day, each game is different, as it really depends on the kind of hands you draw and what tiles that show up during the game. By practicing your playing more often, using these rules lead to better decisions in developing your mahjong strategy. I do have another video with the same rules that follow the meld recognition process and similar to this video, I also walk you through my thinking process and strategies in those games. You can go check it out right here in the end screen. Anyway, thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.